I want to throw up on four words. Sales development and sales enablement. I hate those four words. I hate them. I've heard them said way too much. You know what I want to focus on? Customer outcome. That's what we want to be focusing in on. You know, we're talking about high profit prospecting. But think about this for a moment. Are we prospecting or are we just generating leads? And worse yet, are we generating leads that don't go anywhere? One of the problems I have with organizations today from a prospecting standpoint, and think about it, this is the number one issue that organizations deal with is prospecting. How do we get better leads? I get it, I get it. But the problem is we're getting bad leads. We're getting bad leads. You see, prospecting is owned by sales, not marketing. Whoa! Did I upset a few people with that? Some of you marketing people are saying, whoa, am I getting put out of a job? Let me tell you something. I am sick and tired of sales organizations blaming marketing. Well, gee, if marketing would just give us good leads, we could close more customers. And I get tired of marketing saying, well, we give them all the, okay, so you know what? Let's end it. Sales, you own the prospecting process. Now, that doesn't exclude marketing from being, no, no, marketing is still very critical. You've got to develop the awareness. You've got to develop the tools. You've got to develop all of those things behind to, to create awareness and generate interest. But sales is the one that must own the sales process for one very simple reason. It's sales that closes the sales. It's not marketing. Marketing doesn't close the sales. So why should we have ownership be with somebody who doesn't control the outcome? You see, I said at the beginning, my objective is I want to be customer outcome focused. It starts with lead generation. You see, one of the big problems we have is that we have this problem where we're trying to close deals and we're having to discount them. How many of you have ever had to discount a deal to close it? And if you don't raise your hand, you're lying. Because you know what you got? You got Walmart shoppers you're trying to turn into a Nordstrom customer. You can't do it. You can't make a Walmart shopper be a Nordstrom customer. But this is one of the problems we have with our prospecting process. We have all these lead generation tools. Let's bring all these leads in. Well, you know, I can get a lot of traffic in a Nordstrom store, okay? It doesn't mean they're all buying. It does not mean they're all buying. I can, get Nord I can get Walmart shoppers to walk into a Nordstrom store, but they may look around. Ooh, this looks nice. It's really expensive. I'm not going to buy it. And then, then that's not dissing on Walmart shoppers, no. You see, we have to know who is our target audience. That's where we got to be focusing our time and effort. We got to be focusing. And what happens is we're spending way too much time trying to come up with leads that if you have a heartbeat, if you have a heartbeat, you are a lead. Well, let me tell you something. My dog has got a heartbeat. My dog ain't buying anything from me. But stop and think about that. Are some of your lead generation tools just developing names and contacts? Are they really going anywhere? Wow. How segmented is our prospecting process? Go back to that picture I had of Nordstrom store. And if you think about it, you walk into a Nordstrom store and what is it comprised of? I don't know, it's comprised of 70 or 80 different departments. Not everybody shops all 70 or 80 departments or I don't know how many are in there. You know, I walk into Nordstrom's and I'll shop the men's department. I'm really not gonna be shopping the teen department or any other departments. I'm gonna be shopping my department. You see, one of the challenges we have to look at is do we segment our prospecting process based on the type of customer we're going after? Now, let me, let me drill down on this just a little bit more. We have this real tendency to segment our prospecting process based on the demographic, the psychographic, the industry, the type, the profile of the customer. Wrong, wrong approach. Focus it on the outcome that they achieve. 
the outcome that they achieve. That's the buckets you want to create. You may have a small company that's looking for a same outcome as a big company. That's the bucket you put them in. You see, we have to be much more segmented in how we go to market. And this is one of the challenges I have with, with some of the, the ideas being bantered about. Did I tell you my objective is to upset everybody with at least one comment today? Let me tell you something. There's some things about social, social selling I hate. Social media without social community is social stupidity. Too many people are just sitting there throwing stuff out. Let's just throw stuff out. There's sessions next door, and I, and I love Coca Sexton did a great session on LinkedIn and, 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 and Jeannie Shanks and all these people. I love these people dearly. But let me tell you something. Not everybody is on LinkedIn. Prospecting is a one-to-one -one process. I was with a gentleman the other day responsible for $2 billion worth of purchasing every year. Senior vice president of a $15 billion company. If I said the name, you would know it in a heartbeat. He is not on LinkedIn. He is not on Twitter. He is not on Facebook. He's not on anything. And he tells his direct reports, you will not be on any of those either, because we don't want to be pestered by stupid salespeople. He speaks at industry conferences all the time. He travels with no business cards because he doesn't want to be bugged by salespeople. You see, there's a huge market out there. Can you find them on Google? Sure, you can find them on Google. You Google that person's name and you're going to see tons of expertise. But don't think you're going to reach them by way of LinkedIn. You see, you see, prospecting is a one-to-one -one process. My whole objective is how do I connect with you, you? You see, I'll argue that there's a whole world out there that's untapped. But we come to it going one to one. Now, what does that start with? It does start with you being on social media. Because as this gentleman tells me, he says, nobody comes into my office that I haven't Googled. And believe me, I'm looking at their LinkedIn profile. I'm checking them out. I'm checking them out. Yeah. You see, social media is our reputation builder. One of the speakers in the other room this morning shared with it that said, you know, your, your, your online presence is your, is your resume, and your resume is your reputation. Yeah, it is. It really is, without a doubt. Yeah, you see, so I'm not, I'm not dissing on social media. I'm not dissing on social selling. What, what I'm saying is that I want to be using it. But if I just think I can throw out a bunch of stuff and I'll get these inbound leads and they'll come to me and oh, everything is going to be good. I can't eat likes and clicks and connections. I can't. I got to create one to one. How do I go about doing that? Well, it starts by asking yourself, is prospecting a lifestyle? It's not an activity. I see too many organizations where, you know, this is one of the challenges. This is, this again, is one of those things that I hate. When, when, when we measure, when we measure things, if it can be measured, it's a great tool. I like measuring things. I like measuring things. But what are we measuring? I want to be measuring outcomes. Outcomes. Remember the comment I started off with? Customer outcomes. That's where I'm focused. So let's talk about this from you, from you. What do we mean by you? What, what is it no, if, if you are the leader? I want you to stop and ask yourself as a leader, are you more focused on managing your existing accounts or are you more focused on generating incremental business? The argument I always hear is, and I, well, I don't hear it, but I see it in their behavior, is that what they're doing is they're focused on sitting there saying, I got to take care of this account, I got to take care of this account, I got to take care of this account. And, and all they do, they, they being leaders, that's the person, you know, the bad leaders, that's the person sitting next to you, it's not you, it's the person sitting next to you, okay? They, they, they. 
knee-jerk the sales force away from prospecting into taking care of existing accounts. You must have a cadence in your organization that is prospecting focused. And here's a couple quick things that you as a leader can do. Very, very simple, very easy to do. At the end of every day, you ask your salespeople, what was the number one thing you learned today from one of your prospects? You ask them that question. And you know what? If you can, you get your, you get your team together and, and you ask them that in a group. What was the number one thing you learned from a prospect today? What are you doing? You're creating a culture. And Colleen talked about it earlier. He says, you know, the best way to, to train is with the mentors in the group. And, and this is what happens. It's that the other salespeople are talking to other salespeople. And, and they're saying what they learned, what they learned. And you see, this is what's interesting. When you put prospecting at the top of the funnel at the end of the day, and then you ask them this question, how are you going to use this with who you're going to prospect with tomorrow? And who are you going to be prospecting tomorrow? Don't sit there and call this out in a monthly report. Don't sit there and call this out. You call it out daily. Prospecting must be a lifestyle. And here's the one that kicks you. Here's the one that kicks every sales leader. And guess what? We're coming into the fourth quarter of the year. The fourth quarter of the year. And I see this happen. Oh, man, I see this happen a lot. The, the, the sales leader is out on the road closing deals. You loser. Why are you having to go out on the road and close deals? Isn't that what your people should be doing? Don't get on the phone and close deals. That's what your people should be doing. Your objective as a sales leader is to be on the road the first quarter of the year, to be on the phone, more importantly, the first quarter of the year. Why? Because your objective is to create new relationships, develop new contacts, and create incremental new strategic discussions that are going to lead to incremental business that will occur over the following year. That's what your objective is. It's not about closing the deals. You see, but what happens is you got this closing mentality versus a prospecting mentality. I want you as a sales leader to ask yourself, what new business have you brought to your organization? Have you brought any new business to your organization? Huh. It's embarrassing. But I hate to say it, the majority of sales leaders, I ask this question, I get this, well, oh, shut up, you didn't bring diddly squat. Yeah. Let's talk about some of the myths. We don't need to prospect if we provide superior service to our existing customers. You know, we are so good. Oh, man, we got such a great stable of customers. And, and, and if we just take care of them, you see, this is what the typical, like, this is what the typical sales leader does, is that they knee jerk their salespeople into just taking care of existing business. And, and what happens is that dedicated time to prospect becomes, well, I, I didn't get to it because I was taking care of this. I was taking care of this. Oh, shut up. You see, one day you're going to wake up and you're going to find yourself broke. Because that big customer, what happened was that big customer that started out at 10% of your business, then became 20, then became 30, then became 40, then became 50. And what happens is they got sick. And when that customer got sick, you caught pneumonia. You ever been part of an organization like that? And then so what happens is, oh, wow, we got, we got a prospect. We got a prospect. So let's have a prospecting blitz. Oh, what is that? Is that like playing patty cake? So let's have a prospecting blitz. So what happens is we blitz for like a week or two, and then, then somehow out of the heavens, a piece of business comes down. Oh, business is good, and we're okay. So then prospecting gets put to the side. Prospecting must be 365, 24-7. Let's talk about another myth. Speed creates chaos. Oh, our prospecting process must be just, just, it must be just very methodical. Very methodical. We're gonna, we're gonna create this great ebook. We're gonna do this webinar and we're gonna put this out there and, 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 then, and then all these leads will come in and, and, and we'll very methodically took the, take them through our 19 step process to get to the close. Oh man. You're killing me. You're killing me. 
I'll argue that speed closes more deals. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here, but you know, think about this. You know, our, our customers sit there and, and know more about us than we know about them because it's all over the web. Yeah. See, the customers are engaging with us later and later. You see, I got to stop and ask myself this question. Am I creating the barriers to success in my organization because I'm mandating my people follow a process? Trish Bertuzzi had a panel this morning. Great panel. She made a very interesting comment. People before process. People before process. I see too many organizations where what they do is they put the process in front of the people. No, it's people in front of process. People are your only sustainable competitive advantage. You see, maybe you've hired the wrong people, but that's a whole separate piece. And we can go down that road for hours. But let's talk about some of these barriers to speed. Let, let's dig into some of them. Prospecting the wrong prospects. This is one of the problems I hate with just, just embracing and thinking everything, the sun, the moon, the stars, everything is going to be wonderful if I just do enough social media you'll wind up with the wrong prospects. Because chances are the people who are inquiring about this or inquiring about that, they're just looking for some information. They're not looking for, they're not the real decision maker. Yeah. Not qualifying fast enough. Oh, we can't, we, we don't ask those questions until we have our third contact. Hey. I want, I get you on the telephone, and oh, guess what? I believe the telephone is a very effective prospecting tool. Voicemail works. Let me tell you two quick things regarding voicemail. 11 to 14 seconds. 11 to 14 seconds is a perfect voicemail message. Whoa. Yeah, but you know what? You can do that when you get your act together. It works. It works. Now here's the whole thing, but nobody answers, to, nobody responds to voicemail. Well, guess what? Nobody's responding to your stupid email either. And don't sit there and say, well, well, gee, I'm, I'm, I'm only going to do this. I'm, you know what? It's not your favorite communication method. It's their favorite communication method. The example I like to use regarding prospecting is, is we're sitting here in San Francisco. If I were to leave here and drive, to, drive east on Interstate 80, I don't know, between here and Reno or wherever it goes, I'd probably run across 20 or 30 McDonald's restaurants. And I'll bet you in front of every McDonald's restaurant, ahead of that, there's going to be a sign that's going to say McDonald's. Now that doesn't mean you stop at every McDonald's. No, no. But somewhere along the line, maybe you're going to have to use the restroom or you want to get something to drink. And you're going to say, oh, I am going to stop at a McDonald's. You see, we have to look at our prospecting messages as these are awareness tools part of the funnel. This again is why I say sales must own the prospecting process. Marketing can create the awareness, they can create all that stuff, but, but, but sales is the one that's going to own this. So I, I'm going I'm to have to, I'm gonna, but, but what I want to do is I want to be qualifying fast enough that, so as soon as I get you, I'm going to ask that tough question, when are you going to make a decision? I don't hesitate. You see what happens is too many salespeople don't want to hear the word no. Oh, no! I'll take a no over a maybe or a no over a no response any day. Because no at least tells me that I don't have to waste my time with you. The most valuable, critical asset any of your salespeople have is their time. Treat it that way. Treat it that way. It's their time. We view our product, we view our service, we view it. No, 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 no. It's, it's your salespeople's times. Number three, selling false expectations. Oh, this gets you in trouble. How many of you have had situations where you close this deal with this customer and, and, and what happens is within 30 days, the customer is saying, I want this, I want this, I want this. And well, the salesperson said that. Because what happens is the salesperson selling false expectations to get the close. No. I want to keep my process tight, narrow, specific, not following through. That is the number one. Your customers don't wake up, your prospects don't wake up thinking about you. It just doesn't happen. It just, and, and don't think because you're thinking about them, they're thinking about you. It ain't happening. That's not happening. You see, you stop and ask yourself this question. Am I following through? 
You know one of the things that I tell people from a prospecting standpoint? Whatever you think the speed and the frequency of following through is, you can double that. Double that. Whoa! We are too soft when it comes to following through. But oh, by the way, following through is not sending stupid emails. Well, did you get bit by a lion? Did something happen to you I haven't heard from you? Oh, shut up. If you're sending emails like that, I want to shoot you right now. You, you, yeah, I'm going to shoot you right now. I live in an open carry state, okay. Every message that I'm sending it better be delivering value. Not value about me, value for you. Go back to my 11 to 14 second voicemail message. It's not about, hi, I won the chairman's award, right? Oh, shut up. So what do you got for them? Outcome focused. Everything you're doing is outcome focused. Number five, negative atmosphere. Gee, have you caught that? I've been a little bit negative up here, haven't I? I apologize. I do that very facetiously, but stop and ask yourself. The culture of your organization. Tim Sanders, I love, I love Tim Sanders. But he stole my line from Coach K. I don't know if you were in the room when he was here. But you know what's very interesting is Coach K, Duke basketball, if you're ever in Cameron Arena, and Duke comes down and they make a great play, Coach K immediately jumps up and yells, next play, next play, next play! Because he's getting his players focused on the next play, the next play, the next play. Now, is that creating a positive atmosphere? It's creating a focused atmosphere. You see, what I want to do in an organization is I want to I celebrate success, but I stay focused on the next success. I stay focused. I see too many salespeople, too many sales leaders measuring the negative versus the positive. Another question I love to ask salespeople is what was, what was the most successful thing you had happen today? I love asking salespeople that question because I want them going home on a positive note. But you know what's interesting? I see sales leaders going home on a negative note. Stop and ask yourself this question if you're a sales leader. Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, are you excited for Monday to come around? Or are you saying, oh man, I wish we had a three-day weekend? Well, let me tell you something. The attitude you have is the attitude your people have. Culture starts at the top. Culture starts. So you say, Mark, I'm not at the top of my organization. I'm not responsible for culture. No, you are, because you're above somebody. You're above somebody. Are you creating a positive atmosphere, or are you creating a negative? You see, what does it come down to? It comes down to this very simple thing. I see too many sales pipelines that are nothing more than sewer pipes, because you got all this crap in there. Yeah, and you know what I love? I love asking salespeople this question. Show me your pipeline. And, 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 and then I ask them, so when's the end of your quarter? And they'll sit there and say, well, the end of the quarter is September 30th. And it's amazing how many deals they have in their pipeline that are going to close on September 29th. Liar, liar. Give me a break. You're just putting stuff in there to keep your boss happy. You see, what I want to have is I don't want to have a big fat sewer line. I'll argue that no matter what kind of a funnel I use, I don't want any prospect in that funnel. You know, say I use a five-step you know, five measurement or six-step measurement. I don't ever want to have them in there that in, in a single step for more than two periods. You're either getting better or getting worse, but you can't stay the same. You see, what I want to have is I want to have a water tap. I want to have a water tap where I'm putting prospects in and they're ripping through fast. They're ripping through. You see, my objective huh, is to spend more time with fewer prospects. I don't want more prospects. I don't want more prospects. I want fewer prospects. What does that do? It allows me to spend better time. But you know what it does? It allows me, with my prospects, to help them see and achieve what they didn't think was possible. What is the role of sales? What is the role of sales? It's not sales development. It's not sales enablement. I hate those words. It's customer outcomes. 
I want to help my customers see and achieve what they did not think was possible. Let's flip this around for a bit. You're a sales leader. Guess what? That's your objective with your people, to help them see and achieve what they didn't think was possible. But let me tell you something right now. If you're a sales leader and you have sales people, you can't motivate them at all. I really hate to tell you this. You can't motivate them. Nah, 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 nah. All you can do is create an environment for them to motivate themselves. Think about that for a moment. All you can do is create an environment for them to motivate themselves. Does that mean I focus on the positive? Yes, I focus on the positive. I focus on the positive. I'm a big sports nut. I, I, I love college football. You ever watch a college football coach lose it on the sidelines? I mean, truly lose it? What happens? The team generally falls apart. You watch that quarterback who, who demonstrates leadership on the bench. You know, he gets his offensive line together, he gets everybody together, and they're focused, and they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, I want to focus. I don't care what happens in your organization, there is always something positive that you're focused on. Now, I started off with this whole slide in terms of Walmart and Nordstrom's, and, and, and I was saying that you can't take a Walmart shop and make them a Nordstrom customer, but you know what's interesting? Walmart is incredibly successful. Nordstrom is incredibly successful. They are, because they focus on their respective niches. Focus on your prospect. Now, what's very interesting is you look at Walmart and think about it. They've got neighborhood markets. They, they've got a number of different formats. The number of different formats, what, what does that allow them to do? It allows them to target different customer groups. Nordstrom. Nordstrom's got Nordstrom, Nordstrom Rack, Nordstrom Online, Hot Look. They've, they've got some other pieces. What, what are they doing? It's allowing them, it, it, they focused their process to where they can be where they want to be. What's the takeaway from this? High profit prospecting. But here's what I want you to do. I want you to look at your process and say, is it outcome focused? What are the outcomes that you're helping your customers achieve? And that's where you gotta be focusing. I'm done here in about 20 seconds, but when you eventually leave here, after the next session, get your badge scanned, and, 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 and I'll give you the whole 23 video series on the book that I, I wrote, because it's all designed to help you be able to prospect. Quotable. If you haven't checked that out, you need to. Because as a leader, you have one task, to learn something new every day. You learn something new each day, and you apply it the next. Thanks so much.